All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Today I'm with uh, Daniela Campins. Uh, she works with uh, Liquitex and uh, Windsor Newton as well. Today she is going to do a demo for us on uh, Liquid Liquitex acrylic gouache and Liquitex acrylic ink and kind of show a few different uh, methods and should be a lot of fun. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and let Daniela uh, introduce herself and kind of talk to you guys about what she's gonna go over today. All right, Daniela, whenever you're ready. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. Um, everybody who's joining us today already in this wonderful afternoon. I'm in Los Angeles. Please let us know when you where you are in the chat. Uh, my name is Daniela Campins, I'm an educator with uh, the um, Fine Art Collective, uh, which is an education program for Colart, and Colart is an umbrella uh, company who owns Windsor Newton and Liquitex. And today we are going to be talking about Liquitex acrylic ink and Liquitex um, acrylic gouache. And uh, just a little bit about myself as a way of introduction. I'm a college instructor. I teach at um, California State University Dominguez Hills and other colleges in Southern California. And I do have a background on fine art, specifically drawing and painting. And I received a master's from UC Santa Barbara about eight or nine years ago. And I've, since then I've been focusing on drawing and painting. And I have been doing um, demonstrations for both Liquitex and Winston Newton, I wanna say for about six or seven years something along those lines. And uh, again, today we'll be covering uh, Liquitex acrylic gouache and Liquitex ink. And um, also I will show you towards the end how to successfully combine both of this. And I will also talk about a couple of mediums that could really assist you throughout the process with these two um, materials. And also please feel free to ask questions uh, anytime via the, um, the chat and I'll be more than happy to answer them as clearly as possible. We do have an hour only, so we'll try to keep uh, the demonstration on track. And um, we do have a few things that, um, that I wanna communicate with you before we begin uh, showing you paint. So um, Rebecca, if you can please um, spotlight my table, that would be great. Yeah. Excellent, so um, there's, few handles that you may want to follow where you can get greater information about our products as well as some live streams demonstrations. So first one is Liquitex official. And um, there's also the Fine Arts Collective North America. So that is a TFACNA. And I believe there are even more than 70 uh, short demonstrations on the handle and you can get a lot of in-depth information about anything from um, Liquitex mediums as well as the color range and then also a lot of Winsor Newton uh, demonstrations there as well. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about me, uh, you can see me at Daniela Camping Studio if you're curious and you can also visit my website at danielacampings.com. Uh, Let me this here for a couple of seconds. So today again, we'll be talking about um, acrylic gouache and Liquitex ink. And I wanna start with a super basic um, concept just to define what acrylic paint is. So acrylic paint is water-based, is composed of pigment particles dispersed in an acrylic polymer. An acrylic polymer is somewhat of a plastic. And um, what you're going to have with this is the pigment dispersion, you know, the solid pigment uh, on the emulsion. So here, for example, this is a beautiful ultramarine blue. And this is pigment, this is just raw pigment. Close that up a little bit so that you can look at the color. So very saturated. And this will be at the manufacturing level dispersed onto a acrylic polymer um, emulsion or solution. And today, again, we'll be talking about the acrylic inks and the acrylic gouache. 
And I want to start off by slightly reviewing um, what is gouache and what is ink, and traditionally speaking. So our acrylic ink and the acrylic gouache, they're all acrylic products, right? Everything that Liquitex makes is acrylic based. And again, is the uh, polymer emulsion. Traditionally speaking, if you think about ink, most inks are going to be um, pigment, uh, not pigment based, excuse me, but dye based. And our Liquitex ink is pigment based because acrylic is traditionally made with pigment, okay? So when we think about the contrast in between the Liquitex acrylic ink and other inks, traditional inks are going to be prone to fading over time because dye fades over time. While pigment, those solid particles, as I was showing you with the blue earlier, that those are resistant to the UV rays, okay? And more on that in a little bit. And on the other hand, acrylic gouache is also acrylic paint. However, traditional gouache is very different than acrylic gouache. And please let me know in the chat, um, who here has explored with traditional gouache and do you know what traditional gouache is? And that would be helpful uh, in us understanding uh, the distinction between the acrylic gouache and the traditional gouache. And in this little card right over here, I just have a dry paint demonstration of the Liquitex acrylic gouache, as well as the Liquitex ink. And uh, it's the same pigment with acrylic magenta, but on different categories or paint ranges, okay? And we're looking at dry paint right now, but in a minute we will be looking at, um, at actual um, you know, wet, wet paint. And while you guys answer those questions that I was just posing earlier, I'm going to show you um, some examples of traditional gouache versus acrylic gouache. And that will further help you maybe understand um, what acrylic gouache is. So with traditional gouache, you basically get a paint that is a very pigmented watercolor. That's what it is. So very pigmented and it is also very matte when it dries. Traditionally, watercolor, of course, is very transparent. That's the beauty of it. And it is pigment that is suspended on gum arabic. Traditional gouache is also pigment suspended in gum arabic, but it is at very high concentration. Acrylic gouache has some of the same qualities that traditional gouache has in which that it is very pigmented and that is very, very matte. However, it is acrylic base. That is the binder. So while traditional gouache binder is gum arabic, which comes from a sap from a tree, acrylic gouache is the synthetic polymer emulsion. And as you could see here, the acrylic gouache really goes a long way well, the traditional gouache uh, does not spread as easily. And one of the reasons why the acrylic gouache spreads so nicely is because of the, um, of the polymer that's in it. Here's a little example of a small painting created with acrylic gouache. Is that on uh, paper? Or... Yes, all of these that I'm showing you today are on watercolor paper. And this is um, Winsor Newton watercolor paper, 140 pounds. And it's a cold press. So there's a little bit of texture to it. I don't know if you could see a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like so a little bit of the, the grit. Yeah. Another comparison between traditional gouache and um, Liquitex acrylic gouache is that just like watercolor, traditional gouache, it's activated if it gets wet 
or if it's laid over another layer of traditional gouache. Why liquid texture acrylic gouache, it being acrylic, once it dries, it's permanent. So you can layer as many times as you want without affecting the layer underneath. This is not particularly a bad thing, you know, for the traditional gouache to, uh, to blend in or to reactivate the layers underneath. It's just the inherent quality of the material. So once you learn to work with it, and that's what you're interested in doing, uh, then um, you know, you're aware of the, um, the limitations and the versatility of this material. While with gouache, you're basically building layer after layer after layer. So liquid dust acrylic gouache behaves the same as any other acrylic paint, but it has a lot of the same qualities than traditional gouache in that it is very pigmented and it is very, very matte. So if you're interested on uh, a finish that is very, very matte, which is actually really wonderful for photographing yeah. work, um, this could be the paint for you. Another distinction between traditional gouache and Liquitex acrylic gouache is that acrylic gouache, because it is the polymer emulsion, it's very flexible. So here I have a little piece of, of, um, of medium dried this is acrylic medium. And you see how flexible it is and how transparent it is? Yeah. So the cool thing about it is that the acrylic gouache is very pigmented and you can mix it with any medium and it will not crack on you. Uh, it will not peel off the, pa the paper and you can apply it as thick as you want to. So that is got that going for it. While traditional gouache, if you dare to apply it very thickly, it will start to crack and it will eventually break off of the paper. Okay, yeah. Do that a little bit. Yeah. So Liquitex acrylic gouache, you can apply it thickly and it has the flexibility that traditional um, gouache has. Well, over here, we have some cracking with a traditional gouache. So traditional gouache is not meant to be applied thickly, okay? The cool thing about Liquitex acrylic gouache is that you're gonna be able to get that, um, that matte finish, very pigmented, and you can mix mediums with it, you can apply very thickly, you can get some texture, uh, you can increase the viscosity of the paint without worrying about um, what's happening with a traditional gouache. Yeah. Somebody is asking uh, okay. what the difference is between acrylic gouache and just acrylic paint. Oh, sure. So traditional gouache, uh, sorry, um, regular gouache and regular acrylic paint, you said? Um, acrylic gouache and acrylic paint. Yes. Okay. So acrylic um, gouache is going to be very, very matte. And I have a little, maybe, hopefully it's, you can see it through the camera, but I'm going to go like so. Okay. This might be helpful for me to do like this. So oh, yeah, yeah. over here on the left, you have the um, acrylic gouache. And on the right, you have soft body Liquitex acrylic, okay? They're both professional range paints. And what you see here is that the acrylic gouache has the highest concentration of all the paints that we have, okay? Higher concentration of pigment. High, yeah, higher concentration of pigment, very saturated, and it's very, very matte. While the soft body, um, is not as matte and it's slightly less, uh, less pigmented. Okay. And when you look at the contrast in between how it goes over the black versus the white, you could really see the difference in that the transparency of the soft body is much greater than the transparency of the acrylic gouache. Yeah. And that is related to both its matte qualities, but also because of the higher pigment concentration. So that is the difference. So with the soft body, which is an, our other range, um, you have more of a satin finish. And the traditional gouache, you have this wonderful velvety uh, matte finish. So those are the differences. Uh, higher concentration of pigment and the matte finish. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So with this regard right over here, again, you know, 
again, with the traditional gouache cracking, with acrylic gouache, there are a lot of flexibility. And it being acrylic paint, you can mix it with any of the um, acrylic mediums that we have available. Here, for example, we have the Liquitex acrylic gouache. Uh, this is vivid lime green, really beautiful color, mixed with one of our effect uh, texture mediums, which is called blended fibers. So you could see a little bit of that texture there. Yeah. So the way that you want to think about the acrylic gouache is that they work the same way that any acrylic paint. They just have a different um, finish once they dry. And just like with any acrylic paint, you can actually modify it very much so. So here I have the Liquitex Acrylic Gouache uh, Camion Free Orange mixed with gloss gel. So even though the inherent matte quality of the Liquitex Acrylic Gouache is to look very opaque and very matte and flat, if you mix it with a gloss gel, you can actually change it. You can modify it. Or if you really like the, um, you know, the matte finish, but you want to increase the viscosity of it. Let's go like this, maybe with the angle we can see it. Yeah. Yeah, you can mix it with a matte gel instead. All right. So it is just like an acrylic paint, but it has those qualities and it's permanent. Um, and of course, as with any of our products, it is UV uh, ray resistant. So it is light fast. The life of a um, of a paint of paint has to do with the pigment that is being used. And uh, if you look at the back of this container right over here, you're going to see that it says "Life Fast Excellent." Nice. All right. So, excellent life fast uh, means that while this color is exposed to the UV rays at normal lighting conditions you will have saturation and intensity of the color for a hundred years. And all of the colors are tested for that. And there's different light fastness, depending on the, um, on the, um, on the pigment. There's light fast one, light fast two. And uh, those of you that like fluorescent colors, just know that fluorescent paint is not light fast because it is dye based, okay? So dyes, are not light fast, uh, they are not resistant to the UV rays and they fade over time. And they have not come up with a technology, technology yet to create a, um, I don't know, a dye, fluorescent dye that is, um, that, it, that is light fast because it is not pigment based, it is dye. So that brings me to talking a little bit about inks. So our inks, even though it says right over here, Liquitex ink are actually acrylic based. So within this solution, within the pigment solution that is here, you have the acrylic polymer. So they do behave the same as the rest of the inks. However, the viscosity or the consistency is much, much more fluid than with, um, than with um, the, obviously the acrylic wash that we'll be comparing in a minute. So please let me know if you have any questions about the uh, professional uh, acrylic ink mm -hmm. or the acrylic gouache. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just sample each one of the two and you can check them out while they're, um, while they're wet. And I'm using the same pigments. These are quinacridone magenta. So the acrylic ink, you can also combine that too with uh, mediums as well, acrylic mediums. Yeah, absolutely. You can combine the uh, Liquitex inks with the mediums and we will we'll do that later in a little bit today as well to demonstrate yeah. how that could be worked out. And a lot of people don't know that, you know, people might think that when they read Liquitex ink, they see it as a traditional ink. And all of the Liquitex products, again, are 
acrylic based. So any medium that we produce could be mixed with could be mixed with any of these two products and any of the other ranges that we have available. Nice. So I'm gonna spread a little bit of this magenta in so that you can get a feel from it. So you could see that it's very, very, very pigmented. Like yeah. really wonderful. Yeah, it's really bright. Mm -hmm. Very, very bright. And for the magenta, for the um, gouache right here, I actually applied a lot of paint there, um, kind of like overdid it. But <laughs> you could see here, I got excited. I'm like, yeah, I can <laughs> it there. But you could see here how, you know, they are the same pigment, but they do have a different quality, right? In that this viscosity, yeah of the acrylic gouache is much greater than the viscosity of the acrylic ink. Yeah. And viscosity has to do with how thick or how thin the paint might be. So right over here, we have a much more fluid application and here you have a much more solid application. Yeah. And again, the paint right now looks a little shiny because it's wet, but as soon as this dries, it is going mm -hmm. to dry very, very matte. So the ink, does the ink tend to dry, does it have a sheen to it or is it also? Well, you know, when it's on paper, it doesn't really have much of a sheen. That's, that's, that's my experience with it. Yeah. Uh, when I've applied in, on canvas, uh, it does have a mild, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a sheen, but definitely not as noticeable as to say another one of our ranges like soft body or heavy body. Yeah. More like a satin sheen. Yeah. So it does have a little bit of a sheen, but not, definitely yeah. not as much. Kind of surprised how um, rich the ink is. I was expecting it to be a little more transparent and it's pretty bright. <laughs> very loaded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's very loaded with pigment. And one thing that you may notice sometimes when you get the inks and some colors do it more than others, is that you do have to shake it a little bit if you see that there's solid pigment uh, sitting at the bottom. So that yeah. will happen sometimes. And that does not mean that your ink is bad. It's just that the solution that was used to create the ink is so fine, you know, so um, liquid that the pigment sometimes separates a little bit. So there are some colors, like for example, cerulean blue that will do that. Uh, some yellows do it as well. Um, but yeah, you'll just have to like shake it a little bit and then you'll be able to, um, you know, homogenize uh, the yeah. contents of the yeah. paint. You know, and Some, then you, go ahead. Sorry. Somebody was um, asking, they were saying traditional gouache dries really quick. Um, how does the acrylic gouache compare? Great question, great question. I want to say that it does not dry as fast as traditional um, gouache because okay. the, you know, the polymer emulsion delays the dry time a little bit more than um, a like traditional gouache, which is mixed with water, you know? Got it. So that dries much faster. And then of course, it also depends on the surface that you're using and where you are at in the country, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm working with paper, paper is absorbent. My paint, generally speaking, regardless of them, of whether I'm working with acrylic or watercolor or traditional gouache, is going to um, be absorbed over here, which will um, intensify the drying time. While if I'm working on a gessoed surface, like canvas, for example, that has been gessoed, then the paint sits on top of the surface and it takes slightly longer to dry. And of course, of course, weather conditions, humidity, humidity, whatever you're at, also affects the drying rate of your paint. Yeah. Does it dry similar in speed to like the soft body acrylic? Yeah, I would say so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say so. Pretty close. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's interesting. I always like to compare the same pigment, both different ranges, so that you can get a feel for that. But um, again, because this is, um, let's say, because this is acry um, uh, acrylic paint right over here. If I go like this, let's see if it's dry, it might be a little bit, I should not be able to. Oh yeah. Oh, still wet. So let me find one that's actually right here. Let's do it with this one. Okay. 
So if I go over it with a little bit of a brush, my brush right here, you know, I'm not really moving that out, out of there, but if I do it with a traditional gouache. Oh yeah. Can I see can how really, it activates it, yeah. Yeah, I can really, I wake, I wake that up again. It's, um, so those, that's kind of one of the main differences, you know, and just think about it, traditional, uh, traditional gouache, very similar to watercolor in its workability, acrylic gouache, just like any, um, you know, acrylic paint that you're familiar with. It's permanent once it dries, it's not permanent. However, this is light pass right over here, and, uh, you know, it doesn't fade um, over time. So it has that quality of um, permanence and resistance to the UV rays, okay? All right, guys. So let's see what else I can show you. So let's go ahead and uh, show you some of the things that you could do with the material itself individually. So put this color right over here. And similar to when you're working with any other ink, I'm mixing it with water. I'm working with watercolor, um, with um, just watercolor over the watercolor paint. And we can get this really beautiful gradation with the acrylic ink right here. So quite mm -hmm. stunning. And I can grab another color here. This is the quinacridone magenta. This is a phthalo blue green shade. I'm just adding, adding more water as I drop down. There we go. So the acrylic inks goes a long way because they are just so pigmented. They're they're very very strong. Yeah. This is a vivid red orange right here, and he has this wonderful dropper so that you can select um, how much or how strong you want your mix to be. I'm just going straight on the paper, but of course you could do. You can dilute it further on a ramekin of some sorts. So it is really wonderful. And again, we want to take advantage of creating our own tones are our own like values. This right over here is uh, muted turquoise, a little bit beat up. I've been using that a lot. And I can selectively put a few drops in there. And I'm just going to make that slightly more transparent. You can really see that it goes a long way. It does. Yeah, and I keep on, can keep on going and adding water. And I did add like quite a bit and it's still really pigmented. So yeah. that's to show you that, you know, only a few drops will go a long way. And again, you know, <clears throat> it's waterproof, meaning that once, once this dries, it's permanent. So you can layer on top of this with another color, if you may. Nice. So for example, I have a little bit of, this has already been prepared. I just wanted to show you how you can think about this in regards to, um, to layering. But I can go over it with, I know this is a, a diluted 
color that I used earlier. And right now I'm getting somewhat of a watercolor effect. Yeah. Because it is so transparent. Yes, yeah, so, right? So you can take it that far. You can make it almost look like watercolor in a way. Yeah. So I really like that about the inks. You know, there doesn't seem to be any, like sometimes if you water something down too much, then you start, it gets like you see individual pieces of pigment, but you don't really see that with the ink. Yeah, not as much as, because with watercolor, sometimes there's a separation of pigments and you have all those wonderful attributes also, but this being yeah. acrylic base, I think it's, it doesn't separate as much, it's more solid. Yeah. And then let's see, we can do another color right here. This is muted pink, by the way, part of our muted series. Those colors are so nice. <laughs> They're super cool. You highly recommend. Yeah. And I can take that all the way there. Just adding some more water as I was moving it. So you can layer it. And I'm just using the ink over ink. We haven't even gone over how to work with those two things, the, uh, the acrylic gouache and the acrylic ink together. But you know, on its own, it already has so much potential. Yeah. And another thing that you could do is use a, uh, a dip pen with the inks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place my deep right in here. And you can draw. This is the part that was still wet. Yeah. So it's sort of like filming yeah. out. But over yeah. here, you can just use it as a drawing media, just like you would anything. Nice. So yeah, lots of potential there too. And again, because they're acrylic base, they could go on watercolor paper, canvas, wood, metal, glass, leather, um, fabric, you name it. Um, as long as the surface, you know, it's non-sticky or non-greasy, it will, it should be able to adhere uh, properly. Okay, so today we're using the, um, the paper, but just know that you can also work on all of those other surfaces with any of the um, Liquitex uh, products. So let's go ahead and venture with the, with the gouache. And let's get a couple colors out. This is a cadmium free orange acrylic gouache. And the cool thing about this product, you know, um, again, it's that beautiful velvety matte quality that it's got. And the bottle is actually quite nice. It has this great spout and then you can cut it to your desire you know, of how open you want it to be. If you want it to have a little paint coming out, you can cut it lower. And then when you open it right over here, you know, if you are low, running out of paint, I want to add a medium to this, or you just want to scrape it out with a palette knife, the opening is wide enough so that you can access that much easier. Nice. And the top basically just snaps off. Nice. So very easy. So let's go ahead and put some of this cadmium free orange. Those cadmium free colors, those are something that you guys came out with like in the past couple of years, right? Absolutely. So the cadmium free colors are colors that, um, okay, so the history, historically, cadmiums have a certain level of toxicity to them. And they tend to be not so environmental friendly in the long run. And there's a wide industry of cadmiums, you know, like, that are the paint, like fine art paint industry 
the um the amount of cadmium paint that they might produce and the byproduct is very, very tiny in comparison to the wide, um, you know, industrial complex, which uses cadmiums, like cadmium yeah. batteries and then, I don't know, cadmium for certain paint products uh, and so forth. So a few years ago, they were trying to ban in the European Union um, cadmium as a whole. Yeah. And uh, Liquitex started to develop uh, a range of colors that will behave in its appearance and its covering capabilities, similar to the traditional camions and the developed camion free colors. So we have a full range for from camion free orange, a uh, yellow, excuse me, going through the oranges all the way to reds. Uh, camions are a heavy metal and they're quite difficult to produce in, um, you know, at the manufacturing level. There's some waste going on there. So uh, they're actually also very expensive. Yeah. Uh, the camion free range are basically a environmentally friendly um, substitute for the traditional camions. And they do behave like camion, the traditional camions in that they have a lot of coverage. They're very opaque and they are very rich. And those of you that are familiar with camion colors, um, especially they have a history and uh, for oil painters, is that they're really wonderful for depicting light and shadow effects in, um, in, in our environment. So mm -hmm. they have this very special um, attribute to them. And that's why it's very hard for artists to part with uh, traditional camions. But yeah. again, we came up with this um, out of uh, research and also to give artists uh, an alternative, yeah. an environmentally um, you know, friendly uh, alternative. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and spread some of this paint, the camion. So, and you could see how much, how, how like this has a lot of, it covers a lot. Yeah. It's dead solid here. And one thing that, I, that you should know is that, you know, all of the paints that are, they're acrylic paints, they're going to have different levels of opacity, translucency and transparency. So for example, with this paint right over here, you see the little black square that's on the middle right over here? Yeah. That tells you that this particular paint is opaque, okay? So the opaqueness or translucency or transparency of a color has to do with the nature of the pigment itself, okay? And let's say, for example, this other color, this is primary yellow, you could see right over here that it is, you could see the, um, the square that is not completely filled in, but there's a diagonal uh, line dividing a triangle on the bottom left to yeah. the top right. Yeah. And that means that this pigment is translucent. And let me see if I find one that is transparent. Let's see. Not have one right now, but if you just get a color that has an outline only, rather than uh, you know, filled in or the half filled in, that means that the pigment is transparent. So more common with the inks, like for example, let's see right over here. Oh, it might be a little bit almost impossible to see. Let's see, this one's cleaner. Right around here, yeah. you could see the outline and that means that this pigment is transparent, okay? Nice. So we have the quinacridone magenta with the gouache, actually because of the high concentration of pigment that's going on here, then this one is actually um, translucent and not completely transparent. While the yeah. ink, just because you know the, um, the properties of us trying to make the paint to have that ink quality to it, yeah. Uh, has that the transparent quality to it has the um, the little square, yeah. right? Instead of the um, the half. So this is transparent, and this one is translucent. So right over here again, you know, very uh, high uh, concentration of pigment, lots of coverage, very 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 matte. And again, just know that within all of the ranges, the pigments are going to determine whether the paint is transparent, translucent, or opaque. And yes, you will have some acrylic 
gouache that is going to be you know, translucent and not all the way um, opaque. So when you think about transparent paint, you, may, you wanna think about this quality, right? You can see what's underneath. Yeah. And I can go ahead and use this deep red right over here. And this is actually a wash that I created by diluting red ink, actually this uh, naphthone crimson with some water. Mm -hmm. And you can see how nice and flat yeah. that is, how even it is. Yeah. So another good quality from the acrylic ink is that you can actually um, create these wonderful, uh, consistently even surfaces. And they're highly pigmented again. Nice. So let's go over this very briefly with some of the um, gouache so that you can see how these two uh, behave together. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a color that will be somewhat of a contrast and I'm gonna go for the primary yellow. I'm gonna put some right over here. And the primary yellow, as you could see here, is no full on opaque. It's translucent, it's semi opaque. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this with a brush. And I don't have, I just, I dried my brush. There's no water in here. By the way, the um, acrylic gouache is ready to go. You don't have to mix it with water as you would when you're working with traditional gouache. Yeah. So you don't have to do anything to it unless you want to make it more transparent by mixing it with a medium. You could also add a little bit of water, but be careful with adding too much water to your acrylic paints because you may compromise the um, adhesive yeah. qualities of the paint. So again, this primary yellow was, um, it's, a, it's a pigment that is semi-opaque. So you're able to see a little bit of the color underneath. Yeah, it's good for layering. Yeah, it's a really cool effect. So you can play around with that, you know? Are you trying to uh, create a relationship between the color that's on the top and the color that's underneath to have them optically mix and create more of an orange? Yeah. Or are you more interested on really covering what's underneath? If that's what you want, then it's probably a good idea to use a color that is opaque. So the information yeah. on the label, label is quite useful. So yeah. you can look on the side in the back and it says opaque. And, and then you can uh, make an informed decision on what you're purchasing. So again, this is the opaque cadmium free orange. Yeah. It's funny how um, they kind of look very similar. Yeah. One's yellow. <laughs> orange, right? Yeah, you can see how the yellow is very transparent. You can see through and the red shows through. But then the orange is pretty opaque, so it's not really changing the color too much of it. Right, it's so interesting. Like I, re I, I really enjoy color theory because of those things, and you can use that to your advantage. Yep. This is brilliant purple, and brilliant purple is a, is a com it's created by combining um, more than one pigment. Okay, so when you look at colors, and you're 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 uh, making your decisions on what to purchase, you know, you have to decide whether you want certain colors or whatnot, and some of the paint tubes or the, the bottles that you're getting may be created with a single pigment or mixed pigments. So with this brilliant purple, if you look at the side of the bottle here, it says PW6, that's pigment white. Yeah. And then it says pigment violet 23. Yeah. So this is created by using two pigments. Yeah. As opposed to Queen Acardon Magenta, right over here, when we look at the side, it just says PR122, pigment red 122. So it's just one pigment. 
Uh, <clears throat> so that's really, that's, that's, that's very useful to know. Technically speaking, um, if you're learning about color theory and color mixing and you wanna get the most out of your colors but you're in a reduced budget, I usually recommend to start off with single base pigments because you will be able to get cleaner color mixes. Yeah, if once you start, because if you have a pigment that has, or a paint that has multiple pigments in it and you mix it with another paint that has multiple pigments and it starts to get muddy, yeah, absolutely. And that happens a lot. That happens a lot with my students and, and um, they start to add things, more colors to try to fix a color. They're trying to match a color and uh, they end up with uh, mud, a muddy color. And then they're not, they're, they're not understanding why that is. But to begin mm -hmm. with, if they started with a color or, a, or a, you know, a color out of the tube that already was created by having two or three, even three pigments sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, the tendency is for colors to get muddy and faster, yeah. you know. And again, this was a very um, opaque pigment right over here. You can see the little black label yeah. and also it's on the front. And it has a lot of coverage. Yeah. So really, really cool. And let's see, maybe we can try a different color too. One more. Let's do a blue. Let's do, this is primary blue. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm just gonna put that over the ground. Again, this ground was created with acrylic gouache. Sorry, with um, acrylic ink, diluted with water. And this blue is really beautiful, especially in contrast with the transparent ground. Yeah. And again, it is another opaque color. Yeah. So all that stuff is useful. If you're interested on glazes or transparency and layering on top of another, um, knowing which pigments are transparent, you know, on the on the, which colors are transparent, excuse me, is quite useful. Yeah. All right. So I want to go ahead and now also show you what it looks like when we mix some of these colors with some mediums. And I'm gonna start with some gouache, just to show you at first, and then we will do some with the inks. So I'm using the primary blue here and the Quidacrylum magenta next to that. And I have a gloss heavy gel one thing about mediums um, that you want to know is that mediums are this wonderful substances that you can add to your paint so that you can modify several aspects of your paint. One of it could be sheen. So this is gloss heavy gel, meaning that I am using this acrylic gouache, which is matte by nature. So I'm able to modify that quality and make it now shiny. Another thing that I'm doing also is that I am increasing the viscosity of this paint. I'm going to make it thicker because this is a gel. And a lot of times when we go to the store, there's so many jars of mediums and it's difficult to understand what they're for and what they do and how, and how they could enhance our paint. So if you look at the back, there is a matrix here that actually indicates what the uh, medium does. And there's also some bullet, bullet points that breaks down the different uses that the paint, this medium, excuse me, will have. So for example, here it says that is, this medium is to be used to paint. It's used to paint. It's not for um, preparing the surface, which is gesso, and it's not for finishing. It's to mix it with paint. Next to it is the consistency. It's meant to be thick. Here it's like matte versus gloss. It's meant to dry gloss. And at the end is whether it's opaque or transparent. And this, is a, is, this will dry transparent. 
And I'm just going to use my palette knife here, right over here. Right here. And you could see how it looks very white. And again, it will dry transparent. And I'm going to just take a little bit of my paint here and mix it with this color. And right now, I think there was about 75% medium to maybe 25% paint. And it is changing the color a little bit. Not too much. <laughs> but not too bad, I know, not yeah. terribly. Yeah. yeah, definitely and, extends the paint. Yeah, and just know that, of course, like the more medium you add, the more transparent the paint will um, will end up looking, you know, towards the end. Just like when you add water to watercolor, you know. Yeah. And this is the primary blue. And the medium is really great at um, also increasing the amount of paint you have, right? Because as you could see here, even though I added a lot of medium, the acrylic gouache is just so pigmented that I'm able to almost extend the amount of paint that I have. Yeah, yeah, that's really useful. Yeah, again, um, the, this is gloss. So now I'm changing the quality of the paint from going from matte to gloss. And the great thing is that you can also do the same thing with the inks. So let's go ahead and take, an, take the same medium. And I'm using a gel, but you could do the same thing with the, the fluid medium. So the fluid mediums, like the varnish medium and matte medium, or a gloss medium and varnish, And because my, the inks are so liquidy, I'm actually going to go ahead and have a little well in the middle to place them in so they don't spread all over the place. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and use a little bit of that phthalo blue right in there. And quinacridone magenta on the other. I'm gonna use a palette knife to put them together as carefully as this is so liquid. I'm gonna do this slowly. And I'm, I'm doing it on, on, um, on watercolor paper, but you can actually, you know, it's useful to have palette paper. Yeah. And it's also very helpful to also mix with a palette knife rather than a brush. I find that I'm able to, once I discovered that I could use a palette knife for mixing, when I was a student, I ended up um, spending less money on new brushes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. I'm not in that habit and it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good um, habit to build. Also just with your brush, you know, you, you want to use it to paint that, I don't know it gets so loaded with paint and then if you're going from one color to the other, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a lot of really beautiful colors pre-mixed already and then you dip your brush there with another color, yep. uh, you, con you um, contaminate those colors and they might not be um, to your liking. But again, you know, yeah. I just, just use the ink now and I'm having... It extends it a lot. It extends yeah. it a lot, again, because it's so pigmented. So yeah. with the mediums, you can modify the, um, you know, the sheen again. And because it's a gel, I was able to make them thicker. Yeah. The ink up here, and this, this was the acrylic wash in the bottom that I just did a little bit ago. Yeah. 
So a lot of fun with that. So let's go ahead and do a couple more things. This has been already prepared with a wash and the, um, the acrylic inks, very transparent. And what I did, let's see. I pre-wet the surface, just like you would when you're working with watercolor. And mind my water is a little bit tinted because of, it's the same water that I'm using to clean my brushes. And I can go ahead and take a little bit of my Thalo blue that I had up there mixed with the water. And I can stain my paper. This is the watercolor paper again. I create nice even wash. I'm just extending it all the way down. And you know, it could take a little bit, a few um, minutes, not that long for this to dry. And then while that's going on, um, sometimes what I like to do is to drop a little bit of other color right around the, right around the area. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this with water. I want it to be slightly less saturated. So you can create a fantastic ground. And by ground, I mean like a layer that you can work over with the um, acrylic wash. So cooking show style, you wait a few minutes, this dries, and then you get something like this. <laughs> oh, so fast. It dried so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then we could go ahead and let's use some of this paint, which we have already mixed. And we can just, I don't know, I'm just gonna do something just super simple and swirly. And that's the paint that you mixed with the, um, the gel, the gloss gel. Yeah, this is the acrylic gouache with the gloss gel. So I am layering the acrylic wash, the gloss gel, gel, excuse me, on top of a wash of the Liquitex inks. You can see it's like, it's a little uh, more transparent than it was before, but it's still pretty opaque. Right, I know, that was a lot of medium that I had yeah. mixed here. Yeah. And I had done this prior with more, you know, so that you could see what it looks like, but here's the wash at a gradient with acrylic ink. And then I use a blue adhesive, blue painter's tape, you know, masking tape to create a shape. And I painted the shapes with the acrylic wash. And, uh, you know, I can just keep on going and layering uh, the different, you know, categories of paint, like, you know, my different ranges on top. So this is a phthalo cyanide blue. And I could very much right on top of it.
and I, or I can That's make awesome. a pitch. Yeah. And then once it dries, then I can go over again with acrylic gouache if I want to. Yeah. So I really like the potential of mixing uh, these two different um, color ranges in that this has greater pigmentation and I'm able to create these beautiful browns and I'm able to use it with a deep pen for detail and line work. And it almost has like this atmospheric potential because it sits back in space while the acrylic gouache is just so matte and also so powerful and um, you know unsaturated and intense that it actually almost comes forward towards the viewer. So I can really create like that spatial depth yeah. Yeah. with the two different mediums. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So you know it is a short demo just to show you how these two things could be uh, laid on top of one another and how versatile both are. You can use it with mediums, you know, again, they're both acrylic paint. Uh, they behave like acrylic paint. However, the consistency of the ink is uh, very liquidy and the consistency of the gouache is a little more creamy, almost like, I would say like, I don't know, like creamer in a way, like thick, like a thick cream of some sorts. And Heavy whipping cream, cream yeah. What? Like a heavy whipping cream, but a yeah, little bit thicker. Lovely, like a heavy whipping cream. That's how yeah. this, what it feels like when you spread it, you know? And then again, very matte. This has a tendency to be more transparent, of course, because it's made to behave similar to ink, you know, and to look similar to ink. But again, you can check on whether the color is transparent, uh, opaque or semi-opaque on the back of the, um, of the, of the bottle. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Great, everybody. Well, it was great talking to you all and sharing with you these materials. Um, I'll hope to see you again in the future. And again, if you want to follow us um, and check out the TFACNA TFAC North America Instagram um, handle for more videos and tutorials, uh, we'd love to see you there. And thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, please check back. We have a lot more uh, demos planned for the next uh, few days during our Oktoberfest sale. And um, just so you know, all the um, products that Daniela went over, um, they are on sale in our store right now um, until the 25th. Um, you can order online, come in store, do curbside pickup if you don't want to come inside. And um, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you.